Hey, Jesus Prado, uh, a special day. I think you'll remember this day for the rest of your life. First of all, you must be very proud of your son and what he done all this year and to deliver the title this weekend. Very, very special. Yeah, yeah. to be honest, it was really a really special day. It's like your dream. You start practicing motocross to expect, uh, to expect to dream to win the MXGP class. And yeah, today it happened. And especially this uh, year has been uh, really, really good. And also really tough on the other side because wow, so big gap just in the middle of the season to keep the gap. I said, yeah, it was really stressful for Jorge and for the family. It's like uh, every race nervous. You cannot push too much because you have a lot to lose and nothing to win. And at the same time, you have to keep. So, yeah, it was like this uh, situation really, really stressful. You know, so, so long time. And after the first moto, just how did you feel watching it all unfold this year? You've been with them through thick and thin, through good times and bad times. Just how did it feel, the emotion of him winning his first MXGP title, but of course his third world title? And what's the aftermath of it like with the, the partying going on and everything else? It's pretty crazy here. I mean, uh, to be honest, we didn't expect... I was really... Phew, a uh, strange situation like the first moto, because the guy who I expect to be more relaxed... Uh, yeah, should be favorite to be honest and uh, Jorge was really nervous in the first moto because he's yeah, the first race with the chance for the title and the plan was just to be close to favorite and that's it you know uh, but yeah he messed up uh, big time and yeah it was really I mean also compensate because Turkey was a disaster for us and all long season has been really good for Jorge every moto every race only Turkey was, uh, I don't know what happened, yeah, two bad motos. And uh, maybe this was a present for us, like, to compensate Turkey yeah. from uh, February, you know? And just going back to the very start, obviously fathers usually do play a key role when their sons get into this sport. Can you remember when he first started riding? Back then, did you ever think it would turn into this? Traveling the world, doing, doing what he loves and winning world titles? I think nobody expects uh, this. You start like a hobby rider and yeah, for us, I mean, we start together riding trial bikes and just like for fun. Also in our place was no other trial riders, even no motocross riders. So just go every weekend together close to our home and just uh, riding and then from there, yeah, to win today the MXGP championship, but I think nobody, I think you ask to, yeah, in the paddock to every rider, yeah, it's a dream. You start, yeah, you read the magazines and then you you can uh, follow in my time like Stefan Evers or Jorge and his time like uh, Roxen or, or even Jeffrey, you no? Know? And, yeah, you, I mean, you can dream, but... That's something nobody knows. And being a father, sometimes fathers struggle to know when the right time is to sort of take a little bit of a step back. But it seems like maybe when Prado was in the GP paddock, EMX 125, early MX 2 days, that was maybe whenever you realised he's getting coaching. Was it difficult for you maybe deciding when to take that step back with him and, and well, we, letting the we factory still teams do spend a lot of time together. Like we meet every day. Uh, we meet for lunch. Uh, Jorge is really crazy about, for example, in Rome to go out with the boat, take the boat after the training. And 90% uh, of the days we go together, even after training, we take the boat together and we go for snorkeling or whatever. And uh, cycling, the easy days, because I was cycling my time, I, I do also that part of the program together with Jorge. I enjoy uh, Jorge every day. I can. When, I mean, if he is pushing in the training, I cannot fall, for sure. But then the easy days, like the recovery day or, or long days. Also, to be honest, every easy day for him is coming more hard day for me every time, you know. But that's good. It's something that I like. But what I mean is, like, we spend a lot of time, luckily, together. And, like, uh, every father and uh, son... We fight sometimes, but that's normal because even not in motocross. I mean, every family, every family, yeah, you fight with your son or your son with you. But well, to be honest, I'm really happy the relation uh, we have. And, and uh, I'm gonna say, like, yesterday Jorge told me, like, well, I'm really happy if I can win the world championship because in my case, 
it's, it's not only me, it's uh, you and me. Both together, we win this uh, championship. So I almost cried yesterday. <laughs> oh, almost. <laughs> um, so yeah. it sounds like you've actually moved from Spain to live with them in Italy. What's it like to make that sort of sacrifice? I think from, pe- from people in Europe, it's very normal to move countries. But I think sometimes people outside Europe forget that we have to move countries as well within Europe. And, and, and that mustn't be easy. You know, do, yeah, do, one, uh... do, do you also speak Italian as well? Yeah, Italian, I understand really good. I speak very bad, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, I mean, uh, we live uh, last four years in Rome and uh, I can understand uh, really good Italian, but it's also really close to Spanish. Uh, it was more hard uh, when we moved to Belgium because yeah, Flemish is quite difficult. Yeah, yeah. Still now, after 12 years living in uh, Belgium, I understand only words. That's really tough. But also it was a great experience for my family because Jorge was studying at the school there in Lommel. He speaks really good uh, Dutch. My daughter, perfect. My wife speaks good Dutch. And yeah, the total package is uh, like uh, nice to speak different language, you know? And he's obviously won two MX2 world titles, but this is his first MXGP world title. How does this compare to the MX2 title? Obviously, this is the premier class. Yeah, this more... I feel more like a, we have a weight over our shoulders. Like we moved to MXGP, and uh, immediately I can see the, his level was already top. I mean, first year in the 450 class, he won five GPs straight away. And in the, uh, <clears throat> in that point, when he got COVID, he was uh, hunting uh, Geyser, but or he was winning, or I mean, was in front of Geyser every race, every time, every time. So. To be honest, even the first year we spent, uh, maybe we can win the championship already. Then second year was uh, his level was much better, also bike wise and everything. But for well, one point, when he one day crashed together in Teustental yeah. with Jeffrey yeah. was really bad luck, you know. Yeah. And uh, he got a big operation under his uh, arm, and that was the point. Turn out. Every, every, everything quite uh, quite bad and then he broke two vertebras and then he got COVID again for second time uh, so I mean since the first moment I expect he can win the championship for 50 to 50 he was so young he was 17 yeah he was good but you don't know if you have the level to win the championship or not and was yeah El Pauls in that time was in a really high level so I didn't expect in, the, in that time to win the championship when he was 17. 450, I, I expect already since the uh, first moment on the 450 that he can win the championship. But he was sick every, every year with COVID three years in a row. Uh, last year, broken uh, shoulder. Two years ago, the crash with Jeffrey, the operation, plus uh, two vertebras broken. He raced with the two wins broken in the last three GPs. That year also, I mean, two years ago, his level was, for me, one of his best uh, years. He didn't win so much, but also he was in front every time. He lacked a little bit in the physical side, but he was leading so many laps. And like in Turkey and other races, Jeffrey took him in the last lap or two laps to go, something like that. So this this year, yeah, the championship was like something like we expect. to take a weight off from the, our shoulders, you know? And off the bike, he's very mature. The feet always seems to be on the ground. He's not too cocky. So you must be proud of the young man that he is. But also on the bike, it also shows he's very, very mature. Whenever he's leading, even if there's somebody behind him that's quicker, he knows exactly where to put the bike. Yeah. He, he, he's able to read what's going on behind him. So you must be pretty proud of, of that aspect as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's also something that I like. But like I, I grew up, in motocross together with Jorge, he was like this from uh, since he was child. Like he's, you know, he's not the guy. He takes so many risks. He tried to improve his level training or whatever or or our skills. Try to race under his limit every time, and that's something I like because then normally I'm, I'm never scared when I watch uh, Jorge racing. You know, for me it's good. Yeah, today was a clear example. Also, like second moto, he tried. In the first 18 minutes to push, wow, well, Febre was just pushing very hard and uh, Geyser, and he just let him uh, go. 
And then, yeah, he tried to attack in the last three laps, but then uh, when he was purple, purple, he crashed. He tried too much, but also it's a nice day today to do those things, no? Like, also his character, no? Today was, if he keep third, second moto, he win the GP, but today he was thinking, okay, then today I'm gonna win. First, first, okay. No and just on Jack Lawrence, obviously he gets a lot of hype, and rightly so, but I feel like your guy, is a similar kind of rider, both very smooth, technical, nice to watch. So, are you looking forward to them both battling the motocross the nations? Well, it's a completely different world. When you see the flow you get in the American tracks, you never can get in the MXGP. Here, it's more like a fighting, and uh, and, and here you need to be more strong. I, let's say that in the the autos, for example, in America. No? In America, I think with the natural speed and. Uh, uh, you have a nice technique on the bike, you can win races. Here you need to be a beast on the bike. Otherwise you cannot beat those guys. So to beat Geyser, to beat Jeffrey or Fevri, it's not the same thing. I mean, you really need to fight for, for, for that. Or even uh, Sewer is uh, just an animal. They, they never give up. And these uh, tracks, you need to attack more than in US. I mean, it's nice when you see jumping bumps and everything, but here you cannot do it. It's not those nice bumps to jump to and come to the corner. No? That's something that Jorge is really good, but here you cannot do it. You just need to brake and gas and, oh, and keep the... and try to hold the 450 because the rats are really bumpy in the, you know, in the rats and you need a lot of strength. So it's a completely different uh, thing. But uh, I really like uh, uh, Jet style. I really love the style and I, li I like a lot how to ride the bike. Just on the future, do you think the future is going to be in this paddock now? And there's obviously been talk about America, him going before it. Are you glad now you didn't make the decision to go before this because it's been worth it to win this title? Uh, for sure next year not. But this, uh, we have always, the from KTM since many years ago, the door open to go to US for racing. And uh, I mean, it's more that Jorge decision to say, I really want to go or stay here. So now also it's uh, getting older. It's not 17, 18, I think anymore, 22, next year 23, 23 for sure or not. So now is the time also to take a clear decision if I want to move or not. The, the good thing is like he has the skills to be really good in Supercross. I mean, he has the start. It's yeah. going to be difficult yeah. that nobody can beat him in, or even in America yeah. in the start. And he's really good on the boobs. So if you get whole shot and you are fast on the boobs, I think you can be good in Supercross. But it's something that, because uh, you need to change your lifestyle. Yeah. And last question, will you allow him to have a few beers tonight to celebrate? <laughs> mm, yes, but tomorrow we go back on uh, cycling. Eh? Yeah. So. <laughs>